So, you want to become self-employed and you're in the UK. In this video, I'll give you some practical tips when starting out from your mindset, securing clients and managing your finances. So if that's you and you're new to this whole game, then keep watching. Hi, my name is Ellen Donnelly and at this channel, we help entrepreneurial professionals like you to decide and plan your next career move or business idea so you can feel really clear and excited about your future. And so if you're considering going self-employed, this is the video you wanna keep watching. So please hit like and subscribe if you want more. In 2020, I got offered a contract that was a self-employed freelance contract and almost overnight I was tasked with setting up my legal entity, getting an accountant and getting insured and I had no idea what I was doing and I wish I had the video like this to guide me. Fast forward to today, three years on, I've been running a coaching practice and really met all of the goals and dreams I set out to when I started to become a freelancer and self-employed and build a client base from there. Since then, not only have I achieved my self-employed goals and dreams, but I've also helped many others do the same as a coach, helping them set up self-employed entities and figuring out what that means. So from my own experience in coaching hundreds of others, here are my top tips when it comes to being self-employed and starting out on that journey. The biggest tip I have is to have unwavering self-motivation. That's because being your own boss is all about having that push to keep going, even when you feel like things are hard or you can't really be bothered sometimes. This is the key to it. And as Marie Folio says, everything is figure outable. So where there's a will, there's a way. Many people are familiar with investing in the stock market, but I think of starting your own company or going self-employed and finding clients as like betting on yourself. You're investing in you, the stock of you, and you believe it will go up. And so whenever you make an investment in yourself or your business, think of it like you are in control of this investment and you're the one that will decide whether or not it gets to win. Of course there are risks. There's risks with almost everything in life, but at least with this one, you're in control and it's not in someone else's hands. So don't consider yourself a risky investment. Consider yourself a solid check and keep doing the things that you know will make the difference. Now with your motivation in check, the next thing you need to do is make it official. You have to set up a legal entity in order to trade as a self-employed person in the UK. You can become a sole trader, or you can set up a limited company. Sole traders are typically for smaller, lower revenue businesses. They're a lot easier to get going with and there are less overheads and accounting things to be mindful of. And so if you're dipping your toe in self-employment and you're not sure how long you're gonna do this for or whether you want to build a big business, you can definitely start as a sole trader. The taxes end up being a little bit higher, but then the overheads are also a little bit lower. If you're going for a bigger company, bigger than you, you want to manage teams and so on, and you want to have a really decent revenue number at some point, you can set up as a limited company. What this allows you to do is become official and you will also need an accountant to help you manage the financial side of it if you don't wanna get sued by HMRC. A tip for when you're registering your company, many people wait until they have the perfect name to put under company's house. But what they don't realize is that you can register a company name, for example, your name, and then you could trade under a slightly different brand name if you decide that you want to have something better in the future. So don't let not having the perfect name stop you from becoming self-employed and setting up that legal entity because without the legal entity, you won't be able to do business. For example, my company is called The Ask. That's the name I trade under. That's the brand name. I got that trademarked, but it's not actually the legal name. It's also worth noting, if you want to work with some corporate clients, many of those will require you to have a limited company with the requisite insurance and policies in place. So really think about your client base as you make this decision. The next tip on becoming self-employed is always be promoting your services. See, it's not enough to just do the work that you're given as a self-employed person. You need to be generating work as well. In a company, the people who run that company are the ones responsible for bringing in the work and you as an employee would deliver it. Whereas if you're self-employed, you are the one bringing in that work as well as delivering it. So the best way to do this is think of everything as a business card. Think of your work as a business card for more work. Business begets business. Ask your clients if they need more support, upsell your services, and don't be afraid to spend time in the week looking for new clients, attending events, networking on LinkedIn or other channels so that you can stay visible and on top of people's minds. The best place to be as a self-employed person is fully booked, to have a wait list of clients waiting for you to have availability. 
in order for that to be true, you need great referrals and great service, but you also need to promote yourself. So get comfortable talking about what you do and sharing it far and wide. The next tip I have for becoming self-employed is to pay yourself properly. What I mean by this is don't assume that every time you send an invoice, you're gonna keep all of that money. So there are different things to take into consideration here. Number one, have some time off. You don't wanna work five days a week, all the weeks of the year without having a break you'll burn out and so the point you need to take in here is that you cannot assume every single day of the year you'll be working so plan those holidays take them and accept that it is a loss of revenue for the week or two that you're off but without them you won't be able to keep going and sustain yourself the other reason that not all the money you keep is your own is because you need to pay for the service that you're delivering as well your clients won't be able to provide that to you you're self-employed they're not responsible for your equipment, the software you use, so on. You need to think about a budget for doing the service that you offer. Client lunches, travel, these sorts of things, you need to pay for them out of your own pocket as well. Not to mention things like your accountant and the insurance. You might even pay for income protection, which is basically insurance that if you cannot work because you're ill, then you will still be able to get a payment, providing you've been paying into the insurance to start with. The other reason you don't just assume you keep all the money is that you actually might not have guaranteed income month after month. You see, if you've promoted your service as well and you've done a good job, fingers crossed you'll be fine. But sometimes people experience highs and lows in terms of the income they get. Some months are really busy, other months are really quiet. And so you just need to generate enough cash flow in your business so that you can sustain yourself when things get quiet. My next tip about being self-employed, and it's a really fun one, is to not forget about tax. You don't keep all of the money that you make after your expenses either because tax. <laughs> so you will be taxed by the business itself. There is business tax on your profit. It's a percentage of the profit that is left over in the business. And if you want to take money out of your business for personal spending as a dividend with a limited company, you'll be taxed on that as well. Don't make the mistake I did and forget to keep some money aside in your personal bank account so that when your personal tax bill comes, you can actually pay for it. Make sure you have enough runway for all eventualities and figure out what it looks like to save for expenses for tax and so on and make this a sustainable business. And if you're thinking it's a bit tight, maybe you need to charge more for your services at the start too. You see, self-employed work is challenging. There's so many pieces to it, but for many people who do it, they say that the pros outweigh these cons, the pros of fulfillment, of flexibility, of enjoyment, of building something of your own, of creating a body of work, of working with the clients you choose. These are all the things available to you if you become self-employed. I want you to go and do your research, figure out how to do these practical things, and then you can figure out how you can make enough money and get enough clients so you can really enjoy it and leave stable employment if that is your goal. And so if you're not sure what your next step should be, self-employed, starting a business, quitting your job, changing career, whatever it could be, I have a video to help you decide what's next. So go out and check that on the channel. Before I share my next tip, I want to ask you, what's your biggest question about being self-employed? I'd love to help you in the comments. You see, learning to become self-employed is like learning how to surf. You have to ride the waves and really learn how to navigate the choppy seas and the different pieces that go into it. However, when you're doing it, it can be really fun. And so it's worth the effort. If you think this is for you, then go out and make these things happen and I'll be cheerleading you on from here. Before you go at this channel, we're all about helping you make the right decisions in your entrepreneurial career, whether that's starting a business, starting a side hustle, quitting your job, building the next big thing. We're here to support you. And so don't forget to hit like and subscribe if that's you.